This is the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. We miss the first Sunday. We always miss the first Sunday. It's either Epiphany or the Baptism of our Lord. But we're back to wearing green again, only for a brief time. Valentine's Day this year is Ash Wednesday. So if you have plans, make sure those plans include fasting, okay? All right? You know? So it's a very short period between Christmas and the beginning of Lent. Easter is on March 31st this year, so a very early Easter. So we won't have much. But this year in our ordinary time cycle is the Gospel of Mark. But if you were paying attention, you noticed that today's Gospel is the Gospel of John, which uh, during, because Mark is the shortest Gospel, various times throughout the year, we'll see some insertions from the Gospel of John in our, uh, in our Gospel readings. So we have the start of Jesus' ministry. And we have the first words that are spoken by Jesus in the Gospel of John. Here are those words. And remember, Scripture, when we read sacred Scripture, it's not just to hear about events that happened 2,000 years ago. Especially the Gospels, whenever Jesus is speaking, he's speaking to someone in the passage, imagine him also speaking to you. There's a certain timeless value to the Gospels. It's one of the most, especially the Gospel of John, one of the most, I think, well-written works of literature, you know, there is. Where he recalls the events of Jesus, but in a way that it's not only just looking about what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, but what he's doing in our lives today. So here are the first words of Jesus' Gospel Imagine, even if you have to close your eyes, that he's speaking this to you right now. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Are we able to even answer that question? Because it looks like the disciples maybe were not either. They were kind of blown away. In fact, they answer Jesus' question by another question. It's like they were so caught off guard with that question. They're like, um, well, where are you staying? <laughs> you know, where are you staying? But what are you looking for? We have a hard time answering that question because we live minute by minute, day by day, week by week. The only thing that's occupying our minds right now are not timeless realities, but what I have to do today, what I have to do this week, what I have to do at my workplace, what do I have to do with my kids' busy schedule, what do I have to do about my medical problems, what do I have to do about my retirement, and so forth and so forth and so forth. These are the things that usually occupy our mind. They give us stress, they give us anxiety, we worry about them, and we have no time to answer a very deep spiritual question by our Lord but he still wants to ask us anyways. What is it that we are looking for? What do we want in life? We exist, each and every one of us, we exist by not our own power, right? We came into existence by a power of another. Biologically, you know, our parents brought us into existence. We had no choice or say in the matter. And we're given this rational soul that's very unique to us, this rational soul. We have this very unique ability of our own self-awareness. We're the only creatures in the whole universe that know that we are a creature, that know we exist. Everything else all the animals, plants, everything else doesn't have that type of awareness that we have. That's how we're different from the animals. We know that we are a human being. A dog doesn't know it's a dog. And cats don't know that are cats. But we know that we're a human. And we know that that's a dog and that's a cat. And so I bring this up, in, you know, a little bit of philosophy up, only because we also have 
the ability to contemplate the purpose and reason for our existence. And so what is it that we are looking for? And like I said, the conversation continues with the apostles saying, Lord, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. That word a staying that we hear in the English translation also means abide in. Abide in to abide is a very important word in the Gospel of John. It's really ultimately the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ to abide with him to not just people who profess faith and just say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but to live and, and abide and to be in communion and relationship with him. And so that's the invitation that Jesus is saying. Okay, you want to abide in me? Okay, come. Come with me and abide. See where I'm staying. And notice also how this whole conversation begins in the first place. And this is the important part here. The whole conversation begins with John the Baptist pointing at Jesus and saying, Behold the Lamb of God. That's what draws those two disciples to follow him. Why did they follow him? Why did the, the phrase God's Lamb, that God's Lamb is here, why did it so fascinate them that they started now to follow Jesus and to enter into this conversation with him? It's because the title Lamb of God is one of what? It's one of sacrifice, one of suffering. I argue that the disciples followed Jesus because they want him to help alleviate their sufferings in their life. They followed God's lamb. They want to abide in their sufferings with God, and our Lord wants to abide with us in our sufferings. First and foremost, the lamb of God is a sin offering, right? He's going to offer his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And so, from the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, not only in this gospel, but in the other three gospels, there seems to be an attraction to Jesus to sinners. He wants to eat. He wants to dine with them. He wants to be with them. He wants to abide them because he wants to lift them up. He wants to remove their guilt and their shame. He wants to remove it, to cleanse them, and to bring them to the fullness of life. But it's also a God who, in solidarity, wants to be with us in our sufferings. He's going to enter into every phase of the human sufferings of life. Every, every, every type of suffering we experience, he's going, to, he's going to enter into all of it, into rejection, into re loneliness, into having people lie upon him, uh, to, to lie about him. You know, all, all, those, all those things we go through in various ways in our life. To experience a loss of a father. You know, our Lord, he, he, he experiences it so that then he can also abide with us in our own sufferings. Because life is hard. This life is hard. And again, we don't think about these important questions of what are we looking for because there's so much weight on our shoulders and so much to worry about. We have no time to think of really the purpose of our existence. And so our Lord's saying what? Come, abide with me. Come and see where I'm staying. I'm staying where there's sin. I'm staying where there's suffering. Come, abide, and live with me. And I will give you rest. I will give you hope. Discipleship in Jesus Christ is not just following rules and professing the faith. It's all geared first and foremost to the relationship. Then from the relationship comes the guidelines. Come from the relationship comes from the way of life. Just like any relationship, you know, especially like marriage. When you get married, there's, there's implicit rules now that need to be followed, right? Same with our Lord and our relationship with our Lord. Be, abide with our Lord. Everything that puts you down in life, everything that gives you despair and worry and anxiety, abide, live with him, relate it to him. What are you looking for? Lord, we're looking for peace. Let us abide with him and begin that process of the Lord's peace and joy in the midst of our own sufferings, fears, worries, and anxieties of life. May God bless you.